In December 1969, Beatle John Lennon and his new wife, Yoko Ono, were guests at the Ronnie Hawkins farm in Streetsville, Ontario. Streetsville is now known as part of the city of Mississauga. At the time, I was a 18-year-old uh, teenager, also living in Streetsville with my family, of course, and uh, my sister and I were huge Beatles fans, having uh, seen the Beatles perform live at Maple Leaf Gardens in 1964. Now, as you would imagine, such a famous visitor was to be kept a secret in the town in order to allow John and Yoko some privacy and time to enjoy the farm. My father had told me that John and Yoko were staying in Streetsville because a friend of his had met him when he went out to service the Amphicat vehicle that John had been working on. I thought this was just too good to be true, so we didn't really believe it. In later years, my father's friend brought him a photograph of John Lennon sitting on the Amphicat that he took during his visit when he went out to service the, uh, the vehicle. Eventually, more information was provided. The National Post published an article written by Terry Ott, who conducted an interview with Ronnie Hawkins about the visit of John and Yoko. Perhaps at this time you're wondering who uh, Ronnie Hawkins was. Ronnie Hawkins was known as Rompin' Ronnie Hawkins and he was born uh, January 10th, 1935 and won Juno Awards as a rockabilly musician. Rompin' Ronnie Hawkins or Mr. Dynamo or simply the Hawk was known as one of the key players in the 1960s rock scene in Toronto throughout his career. Some of his big hits were Who Do You Love and Hey Bo Diddley and Susie Q which were all written by his cousin. The village of Streetsville is located in the city of Mississauga. Ronnie Hawkins' farm was located just south of town and uh, near what is now the, the 403 highway. Ronnie Hawkins explained in the National Post article to Terry Ott that he first made contact by a writer of the Rolling Stone magazine named Richie York. He said he was in England with John Lennon and Yoko Ono and they were looking for a place to stay because they didn't want to stay in the hotel or anything. He called me to ask me if it would be okay if they stayed at my house in Mississauga not far from Toronto. So they stayed with us and went on that peace train to see Prime Minister Trudeau. Ronnie said that they went to Montreal and went to Ottawa and wherever John and Yoko wanted to go. In the article, Ronnie told the National Post that um, Yoko had had 16 telephone lines installed in Ronnie's farm home. This was a so that they could make phone calls to all the various contacts regarding their peace train movement. Ronnie explained in another article that John Lennon was working on the famous song Imagine while he was staying at the farm. I'd known Ronnie Hawkins when I worked in my father's gas station in Streetsville. He had uh, lots of old cars that he collected and from time to time he would come in to have tires changed on them and so on. And uh, on other days his uh, band would stop off and buy gas on their way out to a gig. So he was known in the community by uh, my father and I. One night in December of 1969 we saw one of Ronnie Hawkins's Rolls Royces parked at the side of the street and could see the image of John Lennon in the back. We didn't uh, tap on the window or anything because we thought that would be a pretty uncool thing to do. <laughs> Looking back though, I wish I had, had done that and uh, I guess I missed my opportunity to meet a famous Beatle legend. Over the years it followed, I had told the story of John Lennon being in Streetsville to some people 
I had people come up and validate that uh, they knew those stories were true and that they had actually met uh, John and Yoko at the farm at a few social gatherings and so on. I worked with a, a man who uh, at one point in time performed in one of Ronnie Hawkins's bands and one night after uh, the uh, show they all met uh, John and Yoko. So that's uh, the story of John and Yoko in Streetsville, and I hope you enjoyed that. To see a complete copy of the article written by Terry Ott and published in the National Post, see the link in the comment section below. Mm -hmm.